what's keeping me going right now. My full cup of coffee and my pumpkin cupcake candle. You guys, Brian picked these up for me from BJ's. This is the winter edition of the Polar Seltzers. Oh, these are so good. <laughs> Trying to focus. I drew out a little bit of my plans on this one here. Um, so, but it was really messy and you guys know that, you know, I'm not a huge fan of messy. So I'm just going to go ahead and recopy it over here and then make whatever adjustments or changes that I need to make. It is a Sunday planning time and I am so not motivated, but my house is completely quiet and I'm giving myself a time limit and I need to get it done. <laughs> so um, I haven't moved on to my next unit study just yet because I don't know school always works out so much more smoothly in my head and in my heart if I actually put my plans down on my papers. Um, a lot of times I do my planning in my head and not on my papers but it just I feel like it works out so much better. Um, if anything, just so that I have the records already kind of accounted for and I don't have to have it hovering over my head about going back and making sure that I keep the records throughout the week. So it's not that homeschool doesn't go well when I don't put my plans on paper, but it's just that things go so much better and I just brought the kids morning baskets over so that they're a little bit closer to me. My main goal for right now is just to add their token points um, to each piece inside of their morning basket, which I'm really excited about because our token system is like gold around here. So adding it anywhere that I can is so good. So these are the points that I'm gonna be adding to the things that are inside of their morning basket. Um, these are just sticker sheets from Avery. When I was thinking about how to add or assign points to their uh, the items in their morning baskets, I thought about these stickers that I had already um, that I could just print out and use to put on the different pieces that I put inside of their morning basket. So I have four points, six points, eight points, and then a line of ten things that are worth ten points. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just basically a little circle sticker. You can kind of see it, right? Um, completing one page inside of the word search is worth four tokens. So I'm going to take this and put this on the corner somewhere so that they know that it's worth four tokens. I laid out some of these other books. I grabbed um, their work boxes. I try to pull them out like one subject at a time so I can refill them and right now I just have all their science work boxes. I grabbed my water and our world because this is our next unit we're going to be working on. And then of course I have my weekly planning pages. Um, I My goal is just to complete this one page, but if I'm doing extra well, then I would complete an additional page, which would give me two weeks of, you know, general planning. So I've been making my way through my planning pages slowly but surely, and I, I'm really trying to like really pay attention to what we've been doing over the last few weeks and any changes that I want to make. I tackle the subjects basically from the top to the bottom and the first one is Bible. Um, we're going to be working on Noah's Ark and the origami kit that I showed you in our last homeschool haul. So I went ahead and grabbed that. I know my boys are going to be able to do this. But obviously Savannah, I think this might, I don't know, she always surprises me and I really should stop underestimating her. But she is five and just in case I tossed in our Noah's Ark book, which is great. Inside this book is so cute and I'm thinking about doing um, a Noah's Ark map and maybe like a popsicle stick type of model. Um, you guys, my planning time, my planning time is really a lot of fun and it takes forever because I don't know I just try <laughs> I just try to be as creative as possible but um how cute is this so I'm trying to think of something that we can do together to kind of build a model and then I went ahead and grabbed um these which I love having things like these because I thought this would be fun to, to use popsicle sticks I have my craft sticks over here so I thought it would be fun to 
um, lay out a piece of cardboard maybe and um, use my popsicle sticks to create like um, a model something like this one inside of that book and then use our little animals to kind of sort through and put inside of the ark. I thought that would be kind of fun hands on for us to all do together and then it's perfect because I think I'm going to go ahead and join this with the Noah's Ark lesson inside of our history from the good and the beautiful. Okay that is over here. Yeah, right here. We've done this lesson before, but I have no problem with going back to it. And also, um, I switched over with the new Student Explorers. So last year we did the Student Explorer for grades one through three, and I'll probably still use that same one for Savannah, but we moved over to the Student Explorer for grades four through six. So I think the activities are gonna be slightly different, which is, which is nice. So that should work out really nicely. So now I started working on language arts and reading, I'm trying to assess how things have been going with language arts and reading, and this is our book year, so that has been going amazingly. We are still working through The Wild Robot, but it has taken some time because we've just really been reading lots. I mean, we've been having a lot of fun with our read aloud time and um, the kids have been breezing through their um, quiet reading time books. So we kind of took our time through this one and probably missed a couple days, but we should be finished with this soon. I have been doing level K and the pre-K with Savannah and I think that that is too slow. I think our book year reading time has really, really just catapulted her into like a whole new level as far as language arts is concerned. So I think that this is actually, I'm pretty sure that it's time for me to just kind of completely move her up. So we're going to do level K and then I went and grabbed my printed out version of, um, level one which is another reason why i absolutely adore the good and the beautiful because i own level k and the pre-k level but i was able to download level one and go ahead and get started in this one until i'm able to um purchase um, because this download is free on their website which is amazing and if I want to go ahead and purchase the hard copy I can do that when it fits into my budget so I continue on with level K because I don't want her to miss anything and I don't think anything is wrong with just moving along and you know reinforcing any concepts um, and just making sure that we're not missing anything but moving her on to um, the level one I think is what we are going to choose to do and it's going to be a good fit for her. As far as the boys are concerned, I have a second grader and I have a fourth grader. And so we are working through level three together, which is right in the middle. And I get to adjust it as we move along based on, you know, the things that they're stronger in and the things that maybe they might be weaker in and need some more reinforcement. So this has been working out really, really well. We skipped around in level four last year. And this time I'm going to just go ahead and start from the beginning and work our way through. Normally in my planning pages, I just write down the lesson that we are starting with. Um, I don't really write down goals of where I want to be. I just kind of add those along as we naturally move along throughout the lessons. Um, because how fast or slow we move through them doesn't matter to me. It just makes, you know, it matters to me that we are progressing. So, so what I'll do over here is pretty much just write down what we are starting off by working on poetry and idioms so that's where we start and that's all i write and then as we move along i will fill in you know how far we got um if we end up working on poetry and idioms for the rest of the week that is absolutely fine with me if we breeze through that and move on to something else that's fine with me as well so i'll fill that in as we go along i will also be breaking out um our handwriting books to get in a little bit of handwriting practice we have not been working through these pages um, so far in our new school year and that is because we've been doing so much writing um, to go along with our book year and all the reading that we're doing. So this is his language arts notebook and this is any time he wants to write any um, notes that he needs to remember as far as um, figurative language and things like that. Um, he will write notes to himself in here. 
but this is some of what they have been working on and they oh my gosh they so enjoy um working on their stories in the morning so because we've been doing so much um writing in this form um i really haven't focused on filling out any of the writing handwriting um sheets but i think i'm going to go ahead and throw them in this week um, I love their writing so much. So I think I am going to go ahead and throw in a little bit of handwriting practice this week. Um, maybe just print out a page or two and include it inside of their work box and they can finish it any day that they would like throughout the week. So I got these two pages laid out for the boys and I'm going to put that in their work boxes. Um, but for Savannah, um, I moved her on from the Good and the Beautiful handwriting to this one here. I picked this up from our Ollie's and I really, really like these books. The Brainy Book of Handwriting. I have this in the Brainy Book of Addition and Subtraction and Multiplication and Division. I really like the way they lay these. Um, these workbooks out so she's going to use this one so these are perforated pages isn't that what it's called so I'm probably going to go through and detach all of these pages and put them into a binder so it'll make it easier for me to um, copy the pages and use it with the other kids I'm trying to fill out all the bottom bits down here all of our electives and things um, writing geography science history art and music our photography club, our explorers club, our wild explorers club. And right now I'm working on this cooking section. I try to do everything we do in school to incorporate into our real lives. It just makes it easier for me. Um, I am currently working with Home Chef. Um, I'm pretty sure you guys have seen that video already. We had a lot of fun making that video. Um, but for my cooking course, instead of running based on a curriculum, I just try to find as many ways possible as to incorporate it into our real life. So since we have the home chef meals, um, the kids are helping me make those meals and then we use that as our little cooking class and we just try to learn in our everyday life. Um, in addition to that, my oldest son Cameron, he is responsible for making breakfast in the morning and um, as the weeks go along I am trying to teach him how to make different things for breakfast so this week we are going to be working on making eggs. I just went ahead and grabbed my farm anatomy book. I just try to find as many ways possible to incorporate these resources that I already have into our lessons and things. So I thought this would be a great addition because I know that um, it talks about the different pieces of equipment that you use on the farm, but also it covers the things that come from the farm. So I bookmarked this section here because I know that the recipe that we're gonna be making from our home chef box includes um, some herbs. And I believe they are like basil, and parsley and cilantro so I, I thought this would be a good page to bookmark and then i also bookmarked this section here about fresh eggs since i'm going to be working with my oldest to make eggs in the morning i thought this would be a good page to go to but then also they have pages on like tomatoes and i'm sure that's in one of my recipes and things i'm really excited about that you guys because you get resources like this all the time and then you forget to use them. Um, so I'm trying to just reach for the things that I have and use them as much as possible. And that really makes me excited because I feel like I'm making things my own, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna keep working my way through the rest of my planning for the week. I just printed out these super cute pages that I found on Pinterest. How I handle Pinterest, you guys, is because I don't want it to be information overload, but I basically just go back to the um, sections that I pinned just to kind of help jumpstart my creativity and inspire me. But I don't try to add everything to my plate because that's just not wise for us. I did find this printable packet for Noah's Ark. I thought the story sequence would be a lot of fun for a storyboard. I am making my way through the rest of our electives and I hadn't been doing a good job. If you watched my um, what we were doing over the summer, which my summer plans got all extra mixed up, um, <laughs> we were supposed to be doing the Wild Explorers Club and the Snapshot um, for kids 
online photography course. So we didn't get very far in that. So I am restarting that, which is this snapshot online photography school. We are gonna be working on lesson one, which is focusing. I went ahead and added that to our electives below. Lesson one, focusing. And then here's my Wild Explorers Club. We are gonna be doing the wolf assignment one through three. We're just starting all the way over because we just didn't get to properly get into it like I wanted to. For business, which is the last one I figure I'll go ahead and talk about that, we are doing training. Um, so I have really been slacking on the Falco kids, um, but the kids are super pumped because we're gonna start a several week training because really this is their business so they're going to be in training and we're going to talk about why we work the goal is to get them to understand we believe in giving of our gifts so the scripture that we're going to be focusing on is colossians 3 and 23 whatever you do work at it with all your heart as working for the lord and not for men so we're going to tie that scripture into our training course for business. We're gonna jump back into this by creating our backpacks and doing the first couple of um, assignments. So we're just gonna jump in by having them read through the newest edition of the magazine. Is anyone else a member of the Wild Explorers Club? I'm actually oddly excited about this little club. I, some of the as assignments are <laughs> a little bit scary for me. <laughs> I'm not normally an outdoorsy person, so this is definitely going to stretch me. And this is always the fun part in homeschool, just kind of stretching past your comfort zone and learning with the kids. So for science, um, if, as you can see here, we have three different sections for science. I've already answered this question before, but I'll go ahead and repeat it a little bit. Um, I do have unit work and most of our unit work topics um, for our unit studies are science related, but um, our unit studies are not always science related. It just so happens to be that way a lot of the times. But once a week, we still cover just general science topics. As you can see, I split it into kind of three sections, what we are doing on Wednesday for science. Um, and that's because each section kind of corresponds to each individual child. So these are their science work boxes. I, this is actually the first time that I'm trying that out. Normally we do all of science together um, and we're still gonna be doing them together but I just thought that it would be nice to have like, I don't know, the beginning half of our science um, time for them to kind of do their individual studies and at the end we can all come together and go over what we did individually and have that child kind of talk about what they learned. This work box is for my oldest son. This is the Ada Twist Big Project Book for Stellar Scientists. He has to cover page 1 through 16. So he's going to be responsible for all of this and completing these little um, activities and filling out whatever needs to be filled out. And he's going to work his way all the way. This is page 10, 11, 12, 13, well, no, I'm, my counting was all off, but you get the point, all the way up until this page. And then after he is finished, we'll all kind of come together and he's responsible for telling us what he learned and kind of teaching us. This is like our student teacher portion of the day. So that's his. Um, and then he has, of course, his notebook where he's going to write down all the things he felt like were important to kind of help him kind of teach his little lesson to us. Then I have, I've had this for quite some time. This actually came with the first and only other curriculum uh, set that I had used. So just really simple to go through and she's really able to read this on her own now. Um, which is nice but i'll probably do it with her they're just really simple little um, experiments with water and then this last one i know you guys have seen this before our discover kids factivity book explore experiment and discover the world of science so we've worked our way through quite a bit of these but like i said we don't complete the activities inside of the book we do them in our notebooks which makes it really easy for us to do them again and again so he's going to be working his way through this book 
as well. And then he has his notebook. As a general rule of thumb, we just pretty much will be starting from the beginning of the book again. But if there is something that's specific to what we are learning, he can just easily go to that page instead. Um, I used to try to force them to stay on whatever I've assigned. I've learned that it really, it really kills their sense of, um, exploration and discovery <laughs> because I can't think of any other words to describe it better than that um, I try to go with what they're interested in overall um, and most of the time if it's something that we're already covering um, they are drawn to those things anyway but just in case it's something else I try not to get in the way of that just as long as he's completing it, it doesn't matter to me um, the order in which he's completing them. It just matters that he completes them. So, so that's inside of his. So now I have math and my unit study left and then I'll be all done. For math, what I use very, 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 very heavily is IXL. I absolutely love IXL. The kids are loving IXL and I'm gonna do a totally separate video just kind of showing how we use it. But as a general rule of thumb, we basically have to work our way through at least two modules per subject, whatever subject we are covering. And that is um, our electronic work that we do um, and how I switch off between giving my attention to the boys and giving my attention to um, Savannah. Um, the greatest thing about IXL is that it will show me exactly how long they spent on there, um, their progress, it would show me how many questions they got wrong or right, and that is really helpful to me so I can go back and recap where I need to kind of step in. Grabbed our Osmo numbers, um, our Brainy book for addition and subtraction for Savannah, um, and I grabbed one work box to kind of show you. He's got his math notebook, um, his Brainy book of multiplication and division, their ruler, they are color coded. We've got this math kit in here. I basically start on IXL. I am absolutely loving it. It allows me like a ton of flexibility with moving around and kind of fitting the way we um, learn together. Um, my kids really, really enjoy it. How we work this out is each of the kids has, um, and I'm gonna do a more thorough video on IXL to kind of show you um, why we love it, how we use it, and all that other stuff. Um, I actually need to see if there is a code for it if you guys want to try it. I reached out to them when I purchased um, the math for my oldest son. And he was super kind in letting us try it out for a year, um, all of the subjects. And we can't say enough about it. I really can't. And I will explain why I really enjoy it and how we fit it in. So basically this is where I go and I kind of assess what we have been covering over the last few weeks. I am loving how I'm able to toggle between the different levels. We've been doing a lot of pre-K through first grade practice for Savannah and for Cameron and Kendall we've been toggling between third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. I can go to this section and choose each individual child that will show me the certificates that they've earned and um, all of their progress in different areas. And that really helps me to determine what we're going to work on next. Um, I can see where they are kind of struggling or need a little extra help if we need to cover Roman numeral. And this is kind of where I gauge where we going to, what we're gonna cover this week. When I go to each of their accounts, I can see what they have um, completed and what they have worked on. So I can see here that they have, um, Kendall has been working on place value and these little medals let me know that he's completed them and they tell me what the percentage was. So I'll move him over here where he can start wa working on um, comparing fractions and then I'll have him do one on operations. Operations with fractions. In general, we try to complete two modules before we switch over to doing work with mommy. Vanna, she's also going to be responsible for finishing up four pages. Um, when they do uh, work in their workbooks, they are responsible for completing four pages at the minimum. She's worked her way through quite a bit of this 
um, workbook, which is great. She typically tends to go from front to back cover, which is great. The boys, I have a bit more challenging time with them doing them in order, but that's okay. It doesn't matter to me as long as they complete the four pages. So I'll just go to the next page that she's on, which it looks like it is. Um, here we go. So she is doing neighborhood numbers and she's going to be completing these um, word problems, these math word problems. So she's going to be responsible for one, two, three, and four pages. So that is what she will be doing and I'll just write in the page that she begins on. Okay guys, so my planning is all done. Um, how it generally works is this is the process that I kind of use for the beginning of the month I guess and these plans will last me um, through the rest of the month I only plan that first week very heavily and then the weeks that come after that just kind of get added to if that makes any sense um, because when I plan out page by page if we move slower or if we move faster, then I have to kind of erase and redo and all that other stuff. So I just found that if I um, have a very heavy starting place on that first week of the new unit, then I can move on and um, just kind of add in what we are, how we are progressing. And then that's how the rest of the weeks of the um, unit pan out. So normally it's about four to six weeks, um, give or take. And so um, that was me talking you through my planning process. And now um, I'm going to wait to another day to get what I sketched out onto our chalk wall, um, to fill up their work boxes, um, to redo their spelling list for the week. Just all of that list. It's basically down at the bottom there. I just wrinkled my page and I'm very upset about it. <laughs> But basically everything that's down here is what I actually need to physically do. My chalk wall, my spelling words I need to print out, the whiteboard I need to write what I planned. I need to pick the next read aloud. Well, I actually did that. I gave them a choice of three and they chose my father's dragon. That is my plan. So I will show you guys all of that process in another video. In the meantime, I kind of have to move on. I am packing up to head over to the grandparents' house. So we have to pack up their science things. We just throw these things into their book bag. They take their binder and um, whatever we're going to be working on. It is going to be a Wednesday, so it's a science day. So just their um, notebook, whatever they're using for science, and any of their tools. We also grab their pencil box just to make sure we have highlighters and dry erase markers and all that other stuff. So this is... Um, Kendall stuff he's taking. Yay, you made it all the way to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And make sure you are subscribed so that you get notified when we post again. And we will see you in our next video. Bye.